confounded pirates. They know nothing of tillin', only killin'. Stealin' our shovels to melt and forge into axes, of all things. They're bit in the hand that feeds em, the mangy mongrels. I'd love to teach those curs a lesson in obedience myself, if I hadn't sworn to Stalewern that I wouldn't fight no more. So I need you to bring back our farm tools, and make sure those dogs reap what they've sown. I wonder what those sea dogs will try and steal when there's no harvest. Back, and in serviceable condition. Which will be more than we can say of Svrin when we get our hands on him. The wretch likely had a role in the theft. Spied him meeting the pirates in secret, I did. I couldn't care less if the wastrel won't work, but when he consorts with cutpurses that take our tools away, he's crossed the line. Stale were not to know what sort of scalawag he's dealing with. Take word to him, would you? Pirates making off with our tools? Fruel did well not to take matters into his own hands. Last thing I need is blood on my crops. But I'll be damned if Svren thinks he can take us for fools. His treachery won't go unpunished. I've come to expect a great deal from you, lass, and you've never once let me down. Yet what I'd ask of you now goes beyond what I've asked before. Would you hear my plea all the same? It eases my mind to have your ear. You're no doubt familiar with that scoundrel Svrin by now. Well, the scheme and scapegrace is at it again. Since that letter came for him, he's been skulking about in that manner he does when he's up to no good. Now he's rounded up his rogues and buggered off, with nary a word to anyone. I've grown accustomed to his insolence, but something tells me this is different. It ain't exactly Damon, but when last I had words with him, he didn't look defiant so much as hunted. I can't help thinking he's gone looking for trouble and found more than he wanted. So I was hoping you might hunt his sorry hide down and drag it back here before it's too late. The ungrateful little cur bites me every chance he gets, but I can't quite bring myself to cut him loose. I suppose he reminds me a bit of my younger self. Suffice it to say, I'd rather he didn't come to a sticky end. As for how to find him, I'd try a skin grind with at the Etherite. She was the last one to see him. I dare say she'll be able to tell you where he was headed. Nothing that passes through those gates escapes my notice. I saw the rouser and his rabble set out for Wood Whisper Canyon not long ago, singing about drinking themselves stupider. Cheeky Sod said I should join them. I told them I'd rather shrivel up than sip whatever it was that had pickled their brains. If you find the idle swine, be sure and give them a cuff round the ear from me, will you?
of all the dirty, deceitful, downright dastardly deeds that slippery bastards done. Claimin' to take the lads out for a drink, only to lead us straight into a bloody trap. It don't get no lower than that. Course, I've learned to stay a step ahead of Olsvrin, so I was ready but the others weren't so lucky. You've got to help him. My axe may as well be even a white flag for all the good it did. Hope you fare better, or the sorry bastards in there are done for. Svren might have got us into this mess, but I ain't about to let him give his life for us. I'd sooner bow to a fish back than be in that conniving bastard's debt. To arms. A true knave. You betray even yourself, Svrin. Ugh. We were prepared to overlook the matter of your desertion on the condition that you provided us with suitable replacements. That was the agreement. Yet your latest change of heart leaves your debt to us unpaid. Few are they who betray the serpent reavers twice. You will not do so a third time. Cowering behind your protector will only delay the inevitable. Honorless wretch, your life is all you have left. And worthless though it be, we shall take it. O mournful voice of creation. Send unto me a creature of the abyss, my thrall to command, that I may smite mine enemies. That the golem could be vanquished. That woman is no ordinary adventurer. The snake slithered away. I am only glad he did not have the chance to sink his fangs more deeply into you. Those pirates do not belong to any of the known lawmen's and factions. Whom then do they serve? The beast tribes? Surely not. But the timing of their appearance coincides all too neatly with the recent surge in Sahajan and Cobalt activity. Something is afoot. The question is, what? Could it be that the tribes are planning to summon their primals? 
12 help us if it should prove so. Limsa would be hard pressed to keep a single primal at bay, let alone two. But all is yet speculation. I must needs find evidence. The seas continue to rise. while the lesser moon continues to fall. And ILM by ILM, the world becomes ever more unlike itself. It is as Lusoikes foretold. The coming of chaos has rendered the laws of nature mutable, blurring the boundary between the material and ethereal planes. Little now stands between us and the primals. But they are not here yet. Though time be against us, hope shall ever be on our side. Never did the creed of Charlion ring more true. Never did I dream that I would possess the means to see ether, yet now that I do, I do begin to take it for granted. How swiftly do the wonders of Charlion seem commonplace. Um. Here, for you. Have you come for the festivities? Today the Maelstrom officially makes that great hole in the sea its training ground. Join in the celebrations. Wait. A disturbance in the etheric flow. But whence does it emanate? Seizong Grotto, perhaps? What have we here? Can you walk? Tis I regrettably, no. He eluded me. Understood. I will inform the Commodore. You collapsed from your exertions. Are you suitably recovered? Svrin here has apprised me of all that transpired. His account shed some light upon how you came to be attacked by a golem of all things. A golem is a mindless automaton, inert save when commanded to be otherwise. Common pirates could not hope to control such a thing, so arcane are its workings. But then these tattooed wretches are no common pirates they are the minions of the Sahajan. As to their purpose, well, I shall get to the bottom of it. But first I must escort Svrin back to his place of employment. I dare say Stalewern will be wondering what has become of him. And you too, for that matter. I will bear word to him of your preservation, but I am certain he would like to thank you in person. Pray pay the man a visit. Ah, he told me of you, but perchance he did not tell you of me. My name is Weishtala. I am, a naturalist of sorts, surveying the ether in the hope that it might offer up some clue as to our predicament. I'd say I owed you my life, but that don't cover it. If it weren't for you, my friends would be dead, and all. Tis a debt I can never repay. But I'll not make things worse by running away. Take me to Summerford Farms, and I'll face the consequences. For reasons I cannot fathom, you seem. Forgive me. Mayhap we shall have a chance to speak again when I have marshaled my thoughts. Until our paths next cross, farewell.
I knew you'd return. Wajtala delivered Sren a bit ago. Tales of your heroic deeds precede you. The rest came shuffling back, to the lot of M Sport in the same haunted expression. It's me who's to blame for that that and the rest. I was once a serpent reaver. A thrall to the Sahajan? Seven hells. Reavers may look and sound and act like pirates, but they're not but the fishbacks flunkies. Us pirates ain't much for laws, but there's things we won't do. We've got a code, see but the reavers ve never followed a word of it. A few years back, they started snatching law beating Laman Sands. I'd only just taken my oath when our captain bent the knee to his new Sahajan masters. I knew I had to get away. So I crept off one night, got myself a new name, and found myself a new home Summerford Farms. Trouble is, secrets don't stay secret for long round here, and word soon spread, all the way back to the sea. The penalty for desertion is death, but the Reavers offered me a way out instead my freedom in exchange for my mates. The letter. I dunno what I was thinking. I wasn't bloody thinking. Too busy soiling myself. I, but you got there in the end, didn't you? When the time came, you made the right decision. The men say little to me, but I hear M talk of how you stood up to the Reavers at the last of how you tried to give your life to save theirs. Be that as it may, no deed, however good, can atone for the crime of betraying your brethren. I know that I do. That's why I'm going to hand myself over to the Yellow Jackets. I'll bring shame to the farm no more. Hmm. You'll hear no arguments from me. Each man must sail according to his own moral compass. I just hope yours guides you back here someday. There will always be a place for you at Summerford Farms, lad. And I'll always be in your debt, Stalewern. I owe you a debt too, for name. Not once have you let me down. Thank you for saving the men of my farm. If I could ask one more favor of you, it'd be this, tell Baderin what's happened, from start to finish. I'm certain he'd put in a good word for Sven if he knew the whole story. And he's one of the few people I know who the Yellow Jackets will listen to. Well, I reckon I've asked all I can possibly ask of you. Safe travels, lass.
Bloody else. Life on the farm ain't quite how I pictured it. Ah, but ya needn't worry yourself over young Sren. The yellow jacket as ants out the punishments is a good mate oh mine. If I ask I'm nice, I reckon ED be willing to commute the lad sentence from Anjan to Keel Holland, kindly gent that he is. Ah, I'm only jesting with yet. I'll see he's treated fair. Now, it sounds to me like Yevi done everything old stale weren't asked oh yeah and more justifying me generous finders fee in the process. Much obliged, lass. As for a reward, well, she's a lonely lady, this drown in wench oh mine. I'll ya fancy keep an ER company for a spell, with free room and board. Venturin's a try in business, after all. Them as don't rest their bones every now and again tend to end up with broken ones. And take it from me, fightin' ain't nearly so much fun when you're nursing a shattered arm. Got that? Good. There'll always be a free bed for ya, so make use of it. Not that ya'll be much time for lying around, what with all the leaves ya'll be doin'. Oh, didn't I mention? I'm putting your name down for leaves. Our guild draws all manner o' clients, offerin' all manner of odd jobs. Honestly, ye'd be amazed how much folk'll pay to avoid doing an honest day's labor. Just give Team Okri a shout whenever ye feel like making a few extra gil. She'll always obby some task or other for ye to do. Oh, and it's all above board, case you're wondering. We're careful to stay on the Admiral's right side in air unlike some pirates I could mention. I tell ye, if it turns out they had ought to do with them kidnappings, there'll be seven hells to pay. A proper bleedin' reckoning. Mayhap that's what Limsa needs, though. On rough seas, sometimes ye obby to rock the boat to ride it. But we'll obby time for such talk when you're well and rested. Till then, enjoy the wench's hospitality. I'll do ya fair, mama. Rested and ready to expand your horizons. Well, then, I've an idea o' oh, where ye might try Eden next. Ave ye heard o' oh, the sky lift out in middle Lonacy? If ye be ever visited Wode Whisper Canyon, then ye must have been up and down the thing at least once. It's that big bleedin' scaffold and attached to the descent. Ye be likely seen the lads and lasses out there using it to AUL cargo up the cliff face. Ard labor, that, and I hear they could use an enterprise and soul to pick up the odd jobs what no other bugger has time to deal with. Track down the AEADO the operation bloke by the name O Work Ritani will be sure to put ye to work on a task or two.
Baderan sent you out here, did he? Then consider yourself welcome at the skylift. Look at that bloody cliff, will ya? One blast of fiery hell from that huge dragon was all it took to split the ground in half. Cargo still needs to get through, though, so this mess of wood and pulleys was our solution to the problem. Well, one of them, at least. If the gods were kind and they and I'd have about a dozen more workers to handle me grow and list oh headaches. Glad I am to see ya again, lass. A wagon driver just returned in a great bloody hurry, screaming about some monstrosity what sprang out from a million corn seedling in his cargo. Seems the gutless bastard tossed it over the side of Fortune and Tail and running for his life. I need ya to head down the road, recover that seedling, and deliver it to Lyulf over at Swift Perch in Western Lawnacy. Whatever he pays ya for the cargo is yours to keep. After all, I don't rightly know what else is lurking inside that plant, and ya deserve to be rewarded for your troubles. and you'll also find an etherite in Swift Perch, so the journey should be worth your while. Has Nymaya herself forsaken this desolate land? Though I understood there were risks in gambling my entire fortune on a crop of million corn, I at least expected the seedling to be delivered before disaster struck. Is. Is that my million corn seedling? Oh joyous day. It may seem a paltry beginning, but the yield of this particular variety of crop plant is nothing short of astonishing. As you have undoubtedly noticed, Swift Perch lacks a certain, shall we say, vital energy. Thus I mean to restore a modicum of hope to its residents by growing a veritable ocean of corn. You, madam, seem fit to burst with vim and vigor. Might I persuade you to abide a while and help nurture this ailing settlement? You there. Adventurer. Cast your eyes towards the brewer's beacon. Does the light not seem uncommonly weak? It cannot possibly be bright enough to guide the ship sailing in the bay. I would march over to the lighthouse and investigate myself, but I am duty bound to remain at my post. I would consider it a favor if you could make a visit to the brewer's beacon and see if aught has befallen Consuis, the lighthouse keeper.
Yes, a yellow jacket sent ya here? Eh? Me lights grown dim, has it? Well, o oh course it bloody has. The bomb what fuels me furnace has up and buggered off, yes see. If I don't get that beacon fixed up soon, there'll be trouble on the water. I know you're just the messenger, lass, but I can tell a venturer when I see one. I'm going to need ya to chase down that bomb and bring back a claw what ya ripped from its smoldering corpse. Take this here iron brazier and set her down in the middle o the flock somewhere near the scarecrow, I'd say. Ya get a nice fire going, and that frisky bomb will soon be about. Watch ya don't singe your eyebrows, lass. All ya need do is take down that runaway bomb and bring me one of its little claws. Ah, ya got the ashy bastard, did ya? Once I put this little firecracker in the furnace, that should keep things running for a while. I had meself a bit of a look while ya was gone, and Lim Lane curse me if the furnace weren't all bent and broken. Small wonder the bloody bomb was able to escape. I patched things up as best I could, but I ain't no smitty. Ya might want to have a chat with that yellow jacket friend o years and swift perch, and have him pass the word back to someone in Limsa.
the furnace in the brewer's beacon needs repairs? Birgit's beard, I just sent someone out to tinker with it not a week past. Mayhap the bomb Consuis had trapped in there was a touch too volatile? I'll have an artisan visit the lighthouse and pay special attention to reinforcing the casing of that furnace. Your work is done here, adventurer. May the navigator guide you on your journeys. <laughs>